Overwatch 2 and Diablo, two of Blizzard's biggest hitters and massive games in their own right. Combining the two into a single game mode should be a match made in, well, hell, I guess. And while the Overwatch 2 Diablo crossover event is fantastic in parts, the novelty just doesn't quite last as long as you want it to. And the event can feel more like being dragged kicking and screaming into hell than a heroic adventure to defeat the big bad. Let's get into it. The first thing you need to know is that despite what I just said, when I first picked this game mode up, I was a big fan, because it is basically just Diablo and Overwatch, and if I have to explain why that's cool as hell, well, maybe you're already lost to Lilith anyway. Everything about the latest Overwatch 2 PvE experience is spiced up with Diablo references, from the power-ups and boons heroes can pick up for defeating enemies, all the way to the sound effects of chests dropping loot. Everything about this crossover from an aesthetic point of view oozes quality and care. The devs in charge of putting this mode together clearly love both games and made sure that love shone through. The PvE event plays out pretty much like every other PvE event before it. Your squad picks four heroes out of a possible eight and heads to a spooky version of an Overwatch 2 map, this time Blizzard World. From there, you're taking out hordes of Zomnics, summon bosses and bag loot, all very paint by numbers so far. What separates this particular event from the ones before it is the Diablo-style loot system that adds a ton of Diablo-themed abilities and effects to our favourite heroes' kits. Every time you take down a big enemy or boss, which, to be fair, the designs of which need a shout-out, from Lilith Moira to Luke Goblin Junkrat, from Demon Orissa to Shaman Sigma, the looks these bosses are serving are demon slaying, but we'll get back to the bosses later. Every time you take one out, you get a loot drop, complete with Diablo-style chest drop and clink gulp when you drink health potions. The loot drops give power-ups, varying from simple boons like raising attack speed, raising your attack power or movement speed and things like that, to unique drops for specific heroes that add effects to their abilities, like Reinhardt sending waves of light with every swing of his hammer increasing his range, or his fire strike throwing lava onto the ground to help with crowd control. It's fantastic implementation of a Diablo-style loot system into Overwatch 2's game mechanics, and it's a hell of a lot of fun finding out what unique abilities are available, so we won't spoil more. But I can't help but look at these unique boosts and abilities and be reminded of what we lost in the original Overwatch 2 PvE plan, and the cancellation of hero talents and missions. So with that in mind, we should probably look at the less good aspects of this event because there are a few, first and foremost being the bosses. Zomnic enemies being a piece of cake to dismantle is one thing, but the Guardians of Hell being pushovers is quite another. Considering the build-up that each run through works towards, ending with the final summon of one of the big bads of this event, Asmodian Wrecking Ball or Lilith Moira, they could have made them a little bit more interesting and difficult to fight. In short, all of the bosses are larger versions of their normal models, which makes them even easier to deal with. A bigger hitbox means a bigger head and a bigger critical hit zone to aim for. Lilith Moira is way too easy to handle, which considering she's the face of the entire event, does leave a little bit to be desired. Her abilities don't really lend themselves to dealing with a coordinated group of four, and even with multiple orbs flying around and minions to distract you, she's never put up much of a fight on any of our run-throughs. Asmodian Ball was a little trickier, and Demon Arisa especially can be a pain to take down with a Winston bubble protecting her, but on the whole, the bosses just don't quite live up to the hype that a Diablo crossover event creates. Diablo loves a tough boss fight. Overwatch has never quite managed to pull one off. Away from the game mode itself, we should also talk about the seventh circle of hell that is this crossover event skins and unlockables. By now, we've got used to Overwatch 2 locking their best looking and most badass skins behind a paywall, Rarely do they ever make the flagship skin for an event available through normal means, but that feels particularly egregious with the Diablo event. Since the Moira Lilith skin and Denarius Farah skin, which, let's face it, have been pretty much a focal point of all Blizzard's marketing for this event, are exclusive to the $40 Battle Pass bundle and can't be unlocked by simply playing through the event, or even by buying them on their own. The bundle is the Ultimate Battle Pass bundle, which is a more expensive version of the normal Battle Pass, which usually includes a few skins, other cosmetics, and some bonus Overwatch coins you can spend with it. Which is fine, if that's what you want, but players who literally just want the skin have no way of getting their hands on it, apart from buying stuff they don't necessarily have use for. And since Lilith Moira has been billed as an exclusive skin for this Season 7 event, seems pretty unlikely it'll ever be sold on its own, or made unlockable through any other means. Means. And look, I'm not exactly surprised about this. As I said, we've got used to Blizzard putting their best skins behind paywalls, but this just doesn't sit quite right, and it adds a bad taste to what otherwise has largely been a good event for Overwatch 2. Bosses and bad store practices aside, every Overwatch 2 event always seems to feel like a small step in the right direction in some ways, and a big old step backwards in others. That said, if they keep finding ways of adding new abilities into PvE through mechanics like loot chests, I'll feel like we got at least something out of the untapped barrel of potential that was hero talents. Fingers crossed these events will only get better now that we're over a year into Overwatch 2's launch, and the backlash in how the Lilith Moira skin has been handled will see Blizzard make changes in the future. 
So what did you make of the hellish Diablo crossover event? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments, and while we're talking about escaping from hell, you should check out this video, where we document Florida Mayhem's rise to the top of the Overwatch League.